Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about quinolones and fluoroquinolones. We will discuss their structure and mode of action. Let's begin with the structure. Quinolones are heterocycles with a bicyclic core structure known as the four quinolone. The first successful agent in this class to be synthesized was nalidexic acid. The carbonyl group at position number four was found to be essential for the activity of the quinolones. Thus, all of these drugs must contain it. Later, various analogues were made but offered no great advantages. However, a breakthrough was made with the development of inoxacin, which showed improved spectrum of activity. This development was based on the discovery that a single fluorine atom at position 6 greatly increased both the activity and the cellular uptake. Because of that, fluoroquinolones are more used now and has replaced the original quinolones. Here are some examples of these drugs, which are moxifloxacin, norofloxacin, levofloxacin, ofloxacin, and ceprofloxacin. Notice that all of them end with the suffix floxacin, which makes it easy to distinguish them. Quinolones are usually preserved for infections which prove resistance to other more established antibacterial agents, such as penicillin. Lastly, the mechanism of action of these drugs. Quinolones work by inhibiting the bacterial DNA replication and transcription by stabilizing the complex formed between DNA and toboisomerases. In gram-positive bacteria, the main complex stabilized is between DNA and toboisomerase 4, while in gram-negative bacteria, the main complex stabilized is between DNA and DNA gyrase, or toboisomerase 2. So what do we mean by all of this? To understand how these drugs work, we need to understand first the normal DNA replication process that takes place in the bacteria. In the figure here on your left side, it shows how the DNA polymerase form a new DNA strand complementary to the original one. As the replication fork moves forward, supercoiling of DNA occur ahead of it. And for the DNA replication to continue, the supercoiling must be removed. And here comes the role of bacterial DNA gyrase, which removes the positive superhelical twist, so DNA replication can proceed smoothly. At the end of replication process, and at the point where the replication forks made two interlinked DNA molecules, it is the time to separate them in order to form two new daughter bacterial cells each containing one DNA copy. And this is done by the help of toboisomerase. So fluoroquinolones target these two enzymes, inhibiting the DNA replication and leading to no transcription and eventually bacterial cell death. More specifically, in gram-negative like E. coli and salmonella, DNA gyrase complex is the main target of these drugs. Once the drug is bound to this complex, it stabilizes it, preventing the supercoiling removal and stopping the DNA replication continuance, which results in DNA breakage that is fatal to the cell. While in gram-positive, such as mycobacterium tuberculosis, Fluoroquinolones primarily inhibit the DNA toboisomerase complex, leading to disruption of separating the two interlinked DNA molecules, 
which in turn results in bacterium damage. As a result of this inhibition, the bacteria will die. And because of that, these drugs are classified as bactericidal. This is the end of this video. I hope it was clear and helpful. If you have any question, please leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching.